Hello and welcome to the Rubber Ducky tutorial series. In this video, we're going to take a look at you writing your very first starter Netcat payload as a Rubber Ducky script. So I'm taking this original author's script and I've modified or simplified it quite a bit. I want us to step through each of these to see and better understand how these commands work. So let's start at the top. Of course, we always have our very first delay. This is when we load the duck into the USB drive to give the machine time to, to read the contents of the duck. Then I want to go ahead and display or run the GUI so that I can actually see what's happening. Once again, the stealth part of this ducky script is going to be omitted because we want to build on a foundation of understanding of what's actually happening first. Then we're going to have our delay. We're going to run our PowerShell command to start our process. Now moving down to this line, we're going to go into the temp directory. Now once in that temp directory, we're going to create a start.bat. It's at this point that I would like for you to open a DOS command and let's go ahead and type in these commands in there to see how they actually work. So bringing up the DOS command, we can run this CD into temp. And then we can go ahead and start creating this start.bat file. Now it's waiting for me to put some more input in there. I'm going to use a version of Netcat that I've already downloaded. Now, this is different from the original script. The original script actually has an invocation of going out to the internet and downloading it to your victim machine, which is the proper way. But what I want to do here is I want you to actually understand each line of the script. And so that's why I've gone ahead and downloaded a version of Netcat that runs on Windows. I'm going to have it listening on port 4447. The version of Netcat that I happen to be using here for Windows is made by John Cratton and can be found at this URL. Then you can see the next line is Control Z. And there you can see that one file has been copied there. Now that's going to start our listener. Now we go into the building of the Visual Basic script. So once again, it's waiting for my input. I'm going to go ahead and do these commands. And we have our visual basic script that is going to call the start.bat. Finally, as we come towards the bottom, we want to go ahead and start that VB script. Now, in order to make it more persistent, we can place it in the startup directory of the machine. So this means when we run this ducky, we should see the creation of the start.bat file which is going to point to the location of our Netcat installation and also identify the port number that Netcat is listening on. In this case, it's 4447. Now, once again, this is not the sneaky way. I'm doing this deliberately so that we can better understand how the script works. And then we can modify the script in later videos to actually download Netcat from the internet. So let's go ahead and compile this and then put it in the rubber ducky and see what happens. So here's my compilation step. And now I'm going to go ahead and write that to the micro SD card and then place that micro SD card in the rubber ducky. Now let's see our payload in action. And now we can go to our Linux box and we can see that we are now connected via Netcat. 